what is going on guys we are back for episode three of uh the traders breakdown uh don myself we've done this our third one and today we have a very very special guest we have donna from season oh my look at that reveal look at that reveal we have donna from season one how you doing donna introduce yourself a little bit for us uh let us know get to know you a little bit Hey there, my name's Donna Hart. I'm level 54, hailing from Calgary, Alberta, and uh, was season one psychic medium on the on set. <laughs> wow, Donna's good at this. Dom, let's. Dom has to redeem himself from last week. So little uh, do you know, Donna's got the acting experience. Okay, Dom. I got some. Uh, I got notes. Oh, I like notes. I love notes. Good, because we want. I want to hear all those notes. I want to break it down with you. Uh, to the uh, the lovely gentleman beside you there, Dom. Introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, who are you? Uh, I'm Dominic Hamilton, Ontario. Friends with lovely Donna, and uh, I was also on season one with Donna there. And unfortunately, we couldn't make it to the end together. But uh, I called you the one episode. I said, "What happened there?" I I listen, man. There are so much we could unload about that there will always be NDA stuff that will always be NDA stuff. But I will, I will, you will be the first person I will ever defend and have your back with because you were the first person that trusted me. And we knew that if we were going to try and win the game as faithfuls, you had to do it with people that you could absolutely trust. Yes, it's a one on one game. I heard you guys chatting through Mel, to, Mel, Mel, a hi, sweetheart. You're the best. And I'm like, I understand what Dom's saying, and we're going to clarify some of those things. About I, 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 I see you, my brother from another mother. I love I see this because <laughs> I'm ready for. I would love to hear the breakdown from two of the the greatest uh, to play. I want to hear. So Dom, first of all, Don, I want to hear why was Dom kicked off. That's my first question. Okay, listen. Oh, if Dom, you want to know, no, no. Listen, <laughs> I'm uh, just is, messing with you. I'm just messing deal. with you. I already know why. I don't, no, I don't but. The most faithful of the faithfuls. And when, when you're trying to prove your loyalty as a faithful, you can get really triggered in the household and it can push your justice bus buttons and away we go. Like, right. come on now. It was it was done with the best of intentions. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you said that. But does that now you're saying your emotions can get the best of you? You understand it's a game. So you're there to Prove you're a faithful. If you're going to let your emotions get the best of you, that's what the traders want. They want you to, to implode. They want you to, to act out, lash out, make a target on yourself, whatever hey. it is. So it's a game. You're, you're talking to the first crier of the season that gets it out of her system right away. And it's what the game is designed to do. And I'm glad I got that out of the way because then I started to go like this when everybody else in the house was going like this. So it's a game. And uh, my big motto going into this was play the game, don't let the game play me. Right, that's, that's a good motto to do. I, I like that, I like that idea. So I'm gonna start off by asking you, what's, what's the heart? So you, you were both faithfuls on your season. You guys did play together. What was the hardest yeah. part about finding who the traders were? Did you know who the traders were, Donna? Dom swears he knew who they were. He <laughs> says he knew exactly who they were. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Donna, did not you know who they them. were? Not all of them. Okay. Okay. So first, I'm just going to say gaslighting is the hardest thing you're going to face. If you can just trust your gut on these things, you're right. So in, I can't remember whether it was episode three or four. There was a group of us sitting at the couch inside. And I look over at two people and I go, Mike and Koozie? And so I, I, they were on my radar. And the problem is when you get personal or things start to interfere, I've learned looking back that I'm a really natural and intuitive. There were some things I was blurting out that I'm like, I'm never going to not trust that blurt again because I had them clocked in about game three or game four, but the freaking gaslighting gets to you every time. But by round six, table six where we send Kevin home, uh, I knew but knew but knew but knew but knew who the – who the two traders were. I know. So you're saying I you knew. knew who they were. Dom said he knew who they were. How can you not get them out? Do you want to get them out? Are you trying to keep them safe because you know who they are? What's, what's the play? What are you, what are you no, trying to accomplish? No. So I made, so, you know, they say if it doesn't happen on TV, then it doesn't happen on TV, but I'm sorry. I'm going to speak to a very justice moment. Dom can attest to this. I get taken into confessional and like, who do you think is going to win? I said, well, I don't know who's going to win, but I'm going to tell you where I'm going to be in all of this. And they go, what do you mean? I said, well, I know I'm going to be in all this. They go, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm not going to get the money, but I'm going to be at that fire. And they're like, how do you know? I said, because I just know that's where I'm going to be. Okay. I like that. And so, so what, so what happened was 
The minute Dawn went home was the minute it was reality TV versus not reality TV. And there were people amongst the reality TV that you could trust that wanted to play like the normies did. And so there's this space where um, the minute Dawn went home, the numbers changed. The game was over. The trader was going to win. Just it was just speaking to itself the minute so there's just Dom nothing you can do you're saying that you just at that when dom left it was over you can't switch the tide there's nothing you can say or do so like i i have a different take yeah. and again you guys are the two with the experience i have no experience on traders i do have experience on another show i feel like there's yeah. always a way to do it you can't just throw in the towel you got yeah. there's ways to have those conversations yeah. there's social game involved yeah. you can't just throw in the towel and be like yeah. well i'm just gonna wait for my turn so you're like when dom left how many people were left like you were out what oh so, very pretty early that was the, that, that was the, that was that game throw, that throw episode yeah the ghost hunting yeah so how many game people were still in the game, game at that point there was probably like eight left so you're telling me by, by the final yeah. eight the game was decided there's nothing you could do um well okay so here's the thing there's always a fight there's always a chance there's always an opportunity however when the reality tv people that have ganged together like high school kids like high school started from day one with reality tv versus not reality tv we had to try and pick at them to try like in, in the end you're trying to pick off faithful so you can be the faithful at the end let's call that game the game that's the way it goes if you can do it with a couple of people if you can do it with four people we were trying to do it with four people we really were as far as i was concerned Dom. It was you, me, Mel, and Trevon. They were the people that showed they were faithful. We could, there's a trust base. However, when you're looking at, you're the last normie, so they say, standing, the reality TV people are coming for you. Um, the, the writing was kind of on the wall in terms of stack reality versus non-reality. And we could kick and stream all we want. There was four to three or five to four. And, and if we couldn't get one to swing, and we tried, Leroy, dear sweet Leroy, you were born. And um, yeah, there's always a fight. But it's really hard when you come in walking in and the minute you see it's like, oh, look, there's the reality TV versus non-reality TV. And there it is. So game on. Let's see who's going to make it to the end. <laughs> yeah, that's what I don't know. Like when I, I mean, I, I, well, I want to get into this season here, but I, I say for me, it's like yeah. when, when you, you got to, I can't, I don't know. I just, when I go on these shows, yeah. I can't paint everyone with one picture. It's like, I don't care if you're on reality TV. I don't care if you were not. If you're good for my game, we're working together. I don't give I don't care. Yeah. What you're doing. Like, like yeah. Dom and I talk, Dom's like, oh, yeah. I want to work with the Italians. Like. I don't care. Yeah. If someone's Italian, if you're not, if you're well, in my way, you're going home. So anyway, I want to ask some questions about uh, about these yeah. traders because we have Netta. So I don't know if you're familiar with Netta. Have you watched yes. her play Big Brother? Oh, yep. I haven't played Big Brother, but I've heard lots about Netta. That is for darn so, sure. We know Netta's a warrior up there. So you haven't watched her play before? Mm -mm. Okay. So Netta was on two seasons of Big Just a little history. Netta was on two seasons of Big Brother. She was on season two, known as one of the best players. I, I, I think she's phenomenal. Yeah. At Big Brother, okay? Uh, and then she played yeah. again on season five, which was my second season on, se on Big Brother as well. So we yeah. ended up playing together. So just, so just to give a little insight, I, I understand how she works. She's a fantastic player. Uh, this is a very yeah. different game than Big Brother. But what are your thoughts on how she's playing? And, and you could be very honest. If you think it's great, say it's great. If you think it's 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 not so great, tell me it's not so great. We're being honest here. What are your thoughts on her game? Yeah. They killed, they killed um, yeah. the police officer. What was her name? I'm sorry, I forgot her name. Nichelle. 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 What are your Nichelle. thoughts on them killing Nichelle and your thoughts on Netta as a whole? Let's hear it. Okay, so I really feel that there's a clever game in Netta, but Netta needs to be really, really cautious because it would be a curious thing to all of a sudden Kira to recognize that Netta will turn on her in a heartbeat, that if she actually offered the piece all of branch to Michael, John, that they could form and knock Netta out because she's going to take every one of them down if they're not careful. Like, she's a fierce player. It also creates a moving target on her back as things days get shorter. Yeah, I, I think, think I think right. the moves they're honestly making with regards to the kills are probably good good decisions because what I'm finding is is obviously we don't have too much to go on, but they're going for people whose names aren't really in, in you know talked about, which is pretty smart because then it leaves people questioning like how like why what as opposed 100%. to utilizing some of the you know conversations that happen throughout the day to like pinpoint it on someone like for instance is it Melinda there? Melinda's like, oh, this and that, blah, blah, blah. If I get murdered tomorrow, then it's it's got to be Kirkland. So, I mean, you'd think yeah. that the traders would be like, okay, well, let's just run with that because then yeah. Kirkland's going to be the next one at the round table. But instead, they're going off the board and keeping them pretty much like, what's going on here? Like, 
You know, they're they're keeping yeah. the people close to the point where like they yeah. can't catch on. They're pretty smart. It's this game. Yeah, it's this but, game. Yeah. Keep so, leave them like what? I, I completely agree with her targets, and that's uh, and the way I see it. Again, I don't have the experience playing, but the way I see it, that's how I would play it too. You want to get the people that are in the shadows, in the dark, that nobody's really talking about, yeah. they're not in the mix. Yeah. Because as soon as you start taking out the bigger targets, it, it's there's more eyes on everything. I think if you're just taking out the people that are quiet, it, it still has the big like, okay, who was that? Who would do that? Yeah. And you still keep the the Henox and the and the the Kirklands and the, and the Cedra, the ones that are making the yeah. noise. They're gonna. They're the ones doing enough confusing as it is. Let them confuse everybody. Take out the silent killers in the back. Uh, that's that's. I think I think it was a great target. I think taking out Nichelle was a really, really, yeah. really good target. It didn't really it, it put any sus anywhere. They kind of got away with it. Uh, at least from we, yeah. what we saw, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was a very, very, very smart move. Um, the, from what at least we see of Netta, I think she's doing fantastic. I don't know how long it's going to last because I think eventually we're going to be like, hey, listen, guys, Netta's like really good at what she does. And this is, you know, let's start sussing it out. Let's talk to her about it and see what let's let's talk to her, see what can happen. Um, I, and and uh, I just I think she's doing really, 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 really good right now. Almost too good to the point where people are going to start asking questions like, hey, what, what about Netta? Nobody's mentioning her uh, kind of thing. But I think yeah, she's doing a really, really yeah. good job. Uh, all right. What did you yeah. think of? Uh, what do you guys think of Michael? Here, I'll ask Dom first. Dom, what do you think of Michael? I know you were really, you were all about him. Episode one, you were like, he's the, he's the guy. Uh, I've been very hard on Michael. I don't, I don't think he's doing very, very good. Uh, Dom, what are your thoughts, man? I mean, last episode, my prediction was he was going to squeeze through and he's going to last a little bit longer than we, we would expect. So, and, and it happened. It happened this episode. He got to that round table. They made it seem like he was really suspect and this and that. And then sure enough, there were two different names at the table that came about and he kind of squeezed his way through and he's, it's going to help him out now because eventually all those people that started to question him who might be closer with other people in the house may no longer bring up his name in conversation. So I think he's going to last, like I said last episode, a lot longer than people think. The editing made it seem like it's time for him to go, but he's going to last to the point where he starts getting infused with the other two. And then they're really going to push it because you've seen in this episode here, I believe it was Kira. She's really trying to push hard for him to be the narrative for the next one to go to help out their game for sure. So we'll see what happens, but I was pretty right on episode two. And same with Cedric. I honestly felt like Cedric's position on episode one or episode two, whatever it was, made me feel like even though it wasn't a similar gameplay as Donna, is the same climactic thing that had happened to you is kind of almost happening with Cedric. Yours was a little bit different. But it's going to help him in the long run, I think. I think he's going to get further than people expect at this point now. Donna, what do you think? Yeah, so um, I think Michael is a cool dude, of course, in the Supernatural Department. It's really cool to see someone. Um, he came out pretty strong. Like, you know, I learned a thing about confirmation bias. And if people are saying this behavior causes this thing and blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the, someone immediately, the way he stroked his beard, he was having these little tells give away. I think he's going to go further than people think. Um, but I, the only way he's going to get further is really, I think that Kira, and if Kira and Michael wind up taking Netta out, then they're going to carry each other and Kira stands to kill for the win. But it's like, right now he's mad to have some deflection off like some heat taken off of him and i think they'll maybe last one or two more and then he's got to get his game under control and it's really hard in the house we all know this but he's blown he's blown his own cover like he's blown his own cover without I, yeah. I gotta say, and again, I, I include myself when I talk about this. Uh, from home, it's very e – this show is easy from home. We know who the killers are we yeah. know, or the traitors, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. We know – yeah. we have the answers, and, and it's very, very easy yeah. for me to sit here and, oh, just do this and do that, and I, I completely understand that. Uh, but that being said, I think uh, I just – you can the way he answers some questions, very, very sus. I think he's not very good at, at dealing oh. with, the, with the heat and, and the pressure. But I'll, I'll say this. The, the conversation he had in the car, I think it was Henock he was talking to – and uh, I don't know. I'm so, I'm horrible with the names. I I actually think he deflected that very well when he's like, hey, listen, man. Like at first, it was, I thought it was like I was like, oh man, he's cooked. And then he kind of like he, he the way he deflected a little bit. I was like, it was a good answer. Mm -hmm. The the thing I think is that the the sus is already there, so it's gonna be hard to get it completely gone. But I think yeah. what he did in yeah. that conversation, it was a good answer. I think he had a good answer. Like, hey, listen, man, this is the best mm -hmm. I could do. I don't know what else to tell you. Like, you know, I I thought it was yeah. good. Is it enough though? I don't yeah. know. But I think he's safe for a little bit, and I agree with you. With uh, I think I think what's going to happen because Kira and Netta, in in my eyes, are the two main traders, and then he's kind of the background. But 
I think yeah. they both know they need him to turn on the other one. So either Ned is going to have to team up with him or Kira is going to have to team up with him. But someone has to. Yeah. Um, which leads yeah. me to yeah. my next thing. Uh, speaking of the traders and Kira, the, the, the twins or the, the brother sister. I don't know if they're twins or brother sister twi- uh, twist. What are your brother thoughts on that? Kira and her brother, I believe his name is Nick, are in the house together. What do you think of that, uh, uh, Donna? What, what are your thoughts on the twist? Oh, okay. Okay. So I have very mixed emotions about it. It makes me want to drink. Um, I love the twist. I love the twist that we've got a secret human being in there. The problem is NDAs, not NDAs. There, could there have been stuff done? Like there, there's, a, there's an advantage to be had. But if they kept them quarantined and said, you two kept, you know you're going to be on the show. You never know what you're going to be. Because when Diane and Ross were on the one uh, traders, I loved that storyline. But, you know, I'm not one quick to think about the fact that there could be pre-languages and preset things that we don't even know about that can cause problems. And that is a problem. But I kind of liked the twist. I'm not like on a personal standpoint, I'm like, ooh, sneaky, but also a problem. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I, I talked about this a little bit. I, I, I wanted to get your uh, your opinion on it because I talked about it a little last episode, but I'm going to give a quick one too. I, I feel yeah. the same way. I think um, I, I think it's so overpowered. I, I, I do. I'll tell you right now, they both knew they're going in. There's no way There's no way they yeah. didn't know each other yeah. were going in. Yeah. I, I can be 100%. confident on that. So did they do you know signals or, or maybe they didn't think of that. Maybe they did. Who knows? But regardless, they, they are not going to turn on each other. And, uh, and, no. and I feel like they have too much no. power, one as a traitor and one as a faithful, they can kind of deflect, and, and which leads to my 100%. next thing, where Netta brought his name up. Now, I don't know how the traitors thing works. I don't know how the turret, is that what it's called, or the conclave? I don't know how that works. But conclave, yeah. Were they like, okay, mention everybody and talk about everybody. Maybe they're like, okay, mention every single person and give your sh- share your thoughts. I don't know if that's how it works. Maybe that's how they do it, and then they just showed her talking about her brother, showed Netta talking about Nick, or maybe they don't do that. I, I don't know, but... Um, the fact yeah. that she did bring up the brother and, and uh, again, it's all editing and who knows, but Kira's sitting there going, oh shit. Like if, if, if Netta starts sniffing out Nick, because I'll be honest from what I'm seeing, Nick is a very good target to take out. He's quiet. He doesn't say anything. He's not in anybody's way. Nobody's talking about him. That's someone you take yep. out because yeah. he's clearly, um, he's clearly, uh, cleared or at least, you know, not cleared, but nobody's talking yeah. about him. So, um, I think he's a oh, good target to take out. Pac Man, him. Don, uh, Don, what are your thoughts on it? Well, like, you could tell, like, so they're obviously trying to give hints as to what you wanted, Bruno. They did put it in the question that somebody in the house is, is not who they say they are. So they're trying to give hints to, to kind of get people go along with it. And then the fact that Netta brought it up, you could tell that it was an uncomfortable situation for Kira. Something that she didn't necessarily want to talk about that would hurt her game. Now, it looks like it flew under the radar a little bit, but you could tell based on her facial reactions, she thought, "Uh uh-oh, I knew this conversation was going to come up at some point in time, and I was hoping it wasn't going to come up now. Because it it looks looks more than likely she'd really love to defend her brother as as much as it's part of the game is to get him out. And she obviously wants to bring him to the end. But I don't know if this continues to be a thing. I think that's what's going to be the detriment for Kira for sure. Okay, my opinion on the on the where they said uh, someone's not who they think they are or they say they are, to me, yes. because we know there is a brother and sister twist, your mind automatically goes there. I think these house guests aren't thinking that. They're not like, oh, there's a brother sister no, twist. No, they're not. They're you know not. Well, they, did talk, they did talk about they're it. They're not. The they're not saying that. There was like, someone you're that You're connecting the, the two because you have the answer. You know that. Like, you would never guess, oh, they're brother yeah. sister. You're thinking, oh, someone's no. a doctor or someone's a this or someone's a traitor. Yeah. Like, you know, you're not thinking, oh, there's a brother sister yeah. twist. It's got to be Kira and Nick, or like you're never gonna. Pe- that's never gonna come out of that question. You're never gonna piece that together. I mean, yeah, you know, it's like how they worded it at the landmine. I believe was two people in the house know each other, or two people in the house are related. They never said how, exactly. what, where, when, why, who, and so that's a, like that's like Kira did get nervous. You saw they're getting a little antsy, but they wouldn't. I think that's a thing they wouldn't really pick up on because they're they're. You know, so many other things to think about in the conclave, right? Saying, like someone's but, not who yeah. they, they say they are. That, to me, they could be like, oh, well, obviously Duh. someone's a traitor. We think Anybody. they're faithful. Like, or someone's a doctor. We don't know about it. Or someone's a. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's nobody's going to be like, oh, that's a brother sister twist. Like, nobody's doing that. Like, I, yeah. right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, so I want to get into. Uh, okay. So here's the thing. I, I, I'm one of those firm. Here's the thing. If you get a traitor out, 
all that happens is they get replenished, right? So I know you guys talk about, you know, you want to make a team, get the traders out. What's the benefit of getting a trader out rather than just knowing who they are and keeping them in your kind of in your vision? Like, okay, so-and-so is a trader. I know they're a trader. Why would I get them out? And then someone randomly gets replaced, and now i got to figure it all out again. What's, what's the benefit of catching a trader? Donna, uh, let's hear it. I don't know that there's a benefit to catching a trader early. You want to catch them later on at the game. Like I, people really underestimated me in the game. I knew a lot more than I was leading on to. And I think that the faithfuls would have to keep a kind of play almost a dumb, aloof um, stab at things till you're down to the four faithfuls and the two or three traders till the very last day like it, it's really it's a really hard game it's called the traders for a reason it takes a really special group of faithfuls to do like they did over in the uk when three people won together like that's a that's going to be a rare occurrence in the traders franchise it takes a really because you, you're right i like yeah you're right it's it's you have to find your unit try not to get pegged off you do the dance of lasting as long as you can as that unit and hope for the best in the end because I kept just telling folks, I'm like, look, it's called the Traders Canada dudes, and it doesn't mean I'm giving up. I'm trying to tell you that it takes a really unique group of people. TV reality stars that didn't get over themselves and wanted to play with all the cool kids did themselves a detriment not, by not playing a game together with us. By starting, we, it was, there was a real divide in our season, and so you have to be locked down, and you have to wait and make those maneuvers without them knowing, playing dumb the whole time, or leading them on, or stringing them on like I did. <laughs> Yeah, because I feel like to me, if I, say, say I know, let's just say theoretically, I, I, Donna, you're a trader, and I know you're a trader. I, I At yeah. least I know where you stand. I know what you are. I know we're good. We're locked in, whatever. Right. Okay, I, I have yeah. your vision on you. But yeah. as soon as I get rid of you, some random person now that I've already either trusted or whatever is now going to replace you. Then I'm, I'm back at square, not even square one. I'm back at, in the Stone Ages. Really. I have no idea what's going on anymore. So I, I don't, I don't yeah. know this, this hunting the traders thing. I, I don't know. Now, Dom, you were saying in the chat earlier that you knew, you know how they, they can tell who the traders are. I want you to explain this because in the chat you're saying, oh, there was obvious tells that these people are the traders. What, what's the tells? So, so, like, so like for the first couple episodes, everybody was trying to, like, oh, it's this person, it's that person, it's this person because of that. And, and I was thinking to myself, it's all he said, she said. There's no evidence here. You need legitimate, factual evidence to make a decision on who the person was. I mean, this season, I know you don't want to compare, is a little bit different because the competitions are different. So when they put us in that one uh, airplane challenge, we knew as the blue team that because the red team won the shield, that the red team all decided amongst themselves saying, hey, listen, we're not going to tell anybody who has the shield amongst ourselves. That way it keeps the traders curious. But we, as the blue team at the time, knew that no trader was going to take a shot knowing that they didn't know who on their team had the shield. So it was we were all easy targets. And then for some reason in the morning, they elected to go at their own team. So it was pretty apparent at that time for anybody who's got some sort of a brain that the person that actually won the shield was a traitor because they knew taking a shot at their own team was not a risk because they knew who's the faithful on their team. They knew who was the traitor on their team and they knew that they no one had protection. We all thought someone from the blue team was going home that day. That's why we fought okay. tooth and nail with production about the fairness of the mission. Okay, I understand that. You I, you brought this from this this airplane comp up quite a few times, but I'm talking about this episode here. You're talking about this episode here. They obviously know who the traders are because of this competition. So where did they find out? No, this, I'm what saying, is this no, what I was, no, no, no. What I was saying is at some points throughout the season, as time goes on, there are factual evidence that allow you to suss out the traders for oh. sure. This season, no, there's none. I was kind of referring to our season at the time that, that happened, that there is times throughout the season, the way that they put the twists and do certain things that allow you to gain some sort of factual evidence against who it could be. But this season, no, so far, no. Also, we haven't been in there to know what their 24 hours look like and all the context to, to know what's going on. Obviously, we see small snippets and it seems like there's nothing at this point. So yeah, it's, it's pretty much faithful against faithful at this point. And that's what the traders want to see. So no, I agree. I agree with you. I was just trying to refer to our season, and the evidence does come up sooner or later. The way they designed the game. 
Yeah, the way the game is designed, it's. I mean, like I say, like when the traders kill someone, there's no evidence. There's no like smoke and gun. There's no. Mm, it, mm, mm, to, mm. So the whole thing is when people are voting, it's always just a coin flip. You're just saying oh, it's this person because of X, Y, and Z, and, and and you'll make a narrative in your mind. That's what I'm seeing. These people are making these narratives at the round table. Oh, it's because of this. It's because of this, and then you flip the coin and it's wrong. And and for me watching as a viewer, again, I have no experience in this game. You guys do. Um, I, if I'm a trader, I'm sitting at that round table. I'm laughing because. These two people are faithful. They're arguing. They're going to get it wrong. You already know they're going to get it wrong. They don't know they're going to get it wrong yet. And then when they do, well, what happens? They're going to start pointing the finger at the other person and their friends. And, oh, yeah. well, these three people yeah. said it was you. So I went that way because they told me it was you. They convinced me. So I'm sorry. They must be the traitors. And as a trader, you just sit back and watch the show. So it's, it's, uh, it's always crazy to me how people can just hard – Oh, it's I know for a fact it's you. And even uh, Tr Trana at the end was saying, "Oh, you looked and and it's hard at whatever hard whatever the whatever Trana said. Uh, mission accomplished. That's a narrative that was created in their mind. That now it's to, is now fact to them, and that's just the reality because they've they've conjunct it. They just came up with some like magical narrative in their mind, and it's the, it's reality now, and it's like off of nothing. So it just it makes no sense to me why anybody." Anybody would be like, it's you, it's you, I'm 100% sure, because there's nothing to go off of. So, Donna, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I actually made notes because I was watching this part, and I'm like, I learned a new term last, last year, thanks to Mel. I was always on the lookout for new things. There's a term called confirmation bias, where so-and-so sees so-and-so do this, and it makes them suspect. And then, oh, yeah, you're right, I did see them do this, and there's a building, something, and there's nothing evidential whatsoever in that. Where the evidence comes is watching the, where Michael John stumbled was at the breakfast table. He got asked, and you could see him bumble around as like, "Ooh, dude's having a hard time getting out of his gears in the go, and you need to be faster in your fees as trader to do that." So that was a little bit of a, like it's easier said than done from the outside looking in. But if I had seen that, if I'd been the person asking the questions, I would have picked up on that and gone, "Ooh, he struggled with that," and it could still be a sus thing, and we'd still be wrong because confirmation bias exists. So it's a really like it's a gaslighting now, mind what altering if, game I, what if he just show, like though. stumbled like what if he's just like oh man i, I don't i'm not good with confrontation and, and like it. you know they're asking and him a question he it. could be innocent but he's just like I, I don't know how to act here i don't know what to say like what if that's and just it's the a case? true story it, and this is the thing that's the that's the fun treacherous part of the show is that no matter what you do you've cried for the first time you're suspect you've pulled your beard you're suspect there's points and times where you watch how people to get together. Because I went into the house, I, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to be the person that the traders get really close to, and I'm not going to see it coming as a psychic medium. This is going to be the thing that happens to me. And the minute Mel B went home was my reminder, and there it is. There's the stuff to watch out for. And then I personally had evidential tells because someone who had never talked to me at all until all of a sudden we're getting ready to go to a table the night before she's cozying, cozying up to me. And I'm like, you haven't talked to me this entire time. You're a fruit and trader. And I know it because I said this was going to happen. You're doing it right this minute. Caught you. Yeah. And sure enough, we send Kuzi Pack in at one point. That, that's the thing. To me, this is a, a, I mean, it's obviously a social game. It's a lot, you know, you got to make friends and, and build trust and all that stuff. And, and, and that's a big thing. And, and I can only relate to Big Brother myself. And it's like, that's when you know when, you know, people don't talk to you. And then all of a sudden they need you all of a sudden. Hey, best friend, uh, let's sit and talk. And it's like, well, what do you need? You yeah. know, and it's like yeah. three, four days in, a week in, two weeks in, whatever it is. And now they want to talk. So, yeah, no, that's, that's uh, for sure. So it's, it's, uh, what are your thoughts on the round table? Because it was split pretty evenly, like pretty close. It was what Mary Jo and Kirkland. And there was a lot of sus going around and Henock and, and uh, Kevin. Uh, we're kind of pushing towards uh, Mary Jo, and Mary Jo kind of threw towards Kirkland, and people were convinced it was this person, that person. So let's talk about <laughs> it. What are your thoughts on the round table? Um, what are your thoughts? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go, Donna. And I want to hear Dom's okay. thoughts too. But okay. let's go, Donna first. Okay. Okay. So I laugh my head off for two reasons. One is I've been exactly where they're sitting in that moment. I know how uncomfortable those moments feel. You get really triggered. The round tables where the spice is at. This particular season has been extremely spicy, which I love and adore about reality TV. And um, I like. First of all, Kirkland is the, if you've ever met him, is the 
coolest, sweetest, kindest thing. And so it, it starts to be, we have to remember to not take things personally in this right. game because we're trying to play a game. And when Mary Jo and Kirkland start going at it, and then we've got the gangster going, I'm like, okay, now this is a round table. This is exactly what the traders want. Way to go. It's called the Traders Canada for a reason. The mayhem has commenced. The gaslighting has commenced. And that's fast based on this, 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 and this. And now everybody's in trouble. And the traders just sit back and go. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. It was great. And then the way it ended, too, when, when Tran all of a sudden is like, I saw that. And, <laughs> like, as a trader, you're just like, bingo. Like, perfect. Thank you. Like, you don't even have to do anything. They're doing it for you. Like, the next phase <laughs> is now set in motion because someone decides to just say something for no reason, you know? So... <laughs> I made it. I made a note about Tran because I wanted to talk exactly about that. So like, and here we go. This is the perfect lead into the next man. The traders can just sit back and eat their popcorn and watch the show and play their game. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'd I'd love to be a trader in this cast because they just they're doing it for you. You just got to sit back and relax. Dom, what are your thoughts on the round table? Let's hear it. The problem for me is there wasn't enough uh, footage uh, throughout the episode to make me believe as to why this all even happened. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like from being there, like someone who experienced it, I kind of know like those two people were probably in the mouths of everybody throughout the day. And like I said, once you're in somebody's mouths it, it ends up kind of going like a wildfire and there's no stopping it and you're guaranteed to go home. So that part I didn't like, there was not enough context on the episode to lead me to believe yeah, as to yeah. these two were the ones going home. We all thought it was going to be Michael John or Dylan, which obviously he got the shield. Um, but yeah, evidently, I mean, at the end of the day, you guys are right. Like, that's exactly what they want. And the other thing I was going to talk about, actually, which I find with this game that helps the traders out, is the group. So when you're, like, doing your day-to-day -day activities or you go in a car or you're done at the breakfast, people don't get together in a massive group. They get together in small little groups. So eventually, it's like telephone tag where, like, this group talks about something. Then it gets to a different group because that one person went to the other group. And that's what helps out the traders a lot, too, because if a lot of the confrontation were to happen in a massive group, then it would be a lot easier than it is these small groups that form throughout the day. And then they're like, oh, go in a car, pick four people to go with you in a car or pick three people to go with you in a car. And then eventually, because they keep you broken up all day, by the time you get to that round table, that's why those people whose names are in the big mix of it, go home because it doesn't end up becoming a thing where it's a massive group where they can say, okay, this, this, and this before they even get to the round table. It happens at the round table. And at that point it's too late. So with the episode, I was shocked. It was them two uh, that were pretty much on the slates. Uh, I thought it was going to be a totally different ball game, but then again, it's TV and, and they make it yeah. the way that they want it. And yeah. uh it is what it is. At the end, We're it's an edited it show. It's, a, and it's an edited show, and they're going to show you what they want you to see. They're not going to show you what they want you to see. They splice conversations to make it work. There's all that stuff. It's an edited show. It's magic at the end. So yep. do you think now, just what you guys think, your personal opinions, do you think Kirkland's in trouble next week, or do you think he can be like, hey, listen, guys, you know, whatever, or do you think it's Henoc? Uh, who do you think is going to be under fire for a vote next week? Who do you think is getting voted out? I mean, from what we saw, obviously things can change, but from what you saw. Don't I'm actually really concerned about yeah. I'm really concerned about Lori being up on the chopping blog, our teacher, more than I am. I feel like in in Kirkland it's a strong the, the target's there, but I also know that now that the the other person's gone, that there's an opportunity. I think there's a redeemable chance in there for maybe one or two. But I mean he's taking a lot of heat. We've seen a lot of people take heat and be saved for the longest time because the heat's off the traders whereas someone like laura i'm watching my dear school teacher from alberta and i'm like oh my god oh, she's gonna like think of that she's quiet and let's i hope we got to start to see more because it's like i think kirkland i don't think he'll go home this next round i think he's gonna have the target taken off of his back i yeah. really do i feel like the game does well, change yeah. quite a bit right and it's like you can have the heat on you one second i mean and it also isn't anybody but me mentality but I feel like if he – does he have friends? Who are his friends in there? And, that's, and Dom actually brought this up, and I wanted to talk about this too, where there's just not enough – like one episode a week to me is either not enough or they got to do something else. Like take out these competitions. Like we don't care about – I mean I, maybe some people do, but I, I, I personally don't care how much money they make. I think there's too much episode that fills – that the, of the, too much of the episode that's competition. It just takes too much time. There's the, the murder that has to happen. The breakfast has to happen. 
Uh, there's got to be like strategy talk that has to happen. There's the competition that has to happen. There's more strategy talk that has to happen. There's the round table that has to happen. And then the reveal of who gets voted out happens. That's way too many things for one episode. Break it into two. If you want to have this 10 minute competition, in my opinion, it's just, there's too much going on and you're just getting little bits. Like we don't see game talk. We don't see strategy. Yeah. We don't see social game. We don't know yeah. who's working with who we don't get the full picture. We just get a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Boom. It's a competition. Boom. It's a round table. Oh, what? It's these two on the block what happened why is it these two and we don't get enough of the yeah. big picture to kind of piece it together as a viewer that's how i see it either put two episodes a week or just cut out that competition cut it in half it's just too much the round table to me is the best part of the show that's when all the 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 arguing the drama i mean but i want to see strategy on why it got there the social game why it got there who's <laughs> pairing with who but I just you don't get it because there's just so much going on per episode that you don't get those answers, which is unfortunate. And mm -hmm. You don't get to see a mm -hmm. lot of gameplay. Like I'll be honest with you, we're we've just finished episode three, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's probably eight to ten people I don't even know their names still. I've never seen them. They're yeah. you know they're they're non yeah. which is good if you're if you're there, but as a viewer you don't know who they are. But you know so yeah uh, yeah there's a lot what do, you, yeah. what do you think there's a lot of that i think i think we just need more meat to the episodes person i like i, I enjoy the show I love well the show, yes but we need more info yeah because what folks don't realize is for the people that are in this competition there is an opportunity to watch and observe other people through the competition part of where we're we're building money up as a t like there's there's stuff that goes on that can be observed and how people are relating and how it relates to your game but you're right like i feel like last year there was a lot of us we had a lot of garden time we had a fair amount of car time and there is there's some context missing this year because here we are writing was it episode two and we're playing the how root game already with yeah. the horse and the questions like that's a that's a game that needs to be played a little bit later on down the road when we've seen a little bit more of the characters but totally get like for the, from a trader's perspective that was a dirty good play to play traders canada and also we don't have the context around people we can we're just starting to get a feel for the um you know dom talked about this this character business earlier there are personality types that they definitely sort of we haven't seen the personalities of a few show up yet so therefore they are in the background and the people that are making a lot of the noise and doing their mirror work are are to the forefront but that's going to switch as numbers start to go down right all of a sudden Great. we've got those edits that come in where the people that have been really quiet are all of a sudden having some more airtime all of a sudden so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those people who don't get a lot of airtime will be close to the finish. Yeah, that's, my, that's so. my thing. So, like, essentially what they'll do is, is they'll keep them in the background and, like, make them a nobody type thing. And then eventually either a few of them will trickle through to the end and then they'll start bringing on the fire. Or they just absolutely got no airtime and the, they didn't provide any the, content for them at all. Yeah, yeah, the purple edits, right? The purple edits happen. The way, the, the way I look <laughs> at it, the the more airtime you're getting is is because you're in the mix. Either they're talking about you, you're talking too much, you're doing stuff like that. The ones if again, it's a show. You are it's too much. Show. Yeah, if you're not, if you're not, you know, if you're kind of just minding your business, staying out of the mix. Well, that, that's good for your game, but as a viewer, it's hard to translate that that's social the, game or whatever. So. It's the 100%. ones that are usually louder or the ones that are in the mix or starting the stuff or whatever it is. They're, they're getting the airtime. So I agree. I think if you're not on the TV, uh, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's, it means that you're not – nobody's talking about you. Like if people are talking about you, they got to show you. They got to show why they're talking about you. If nobody's talking about you, there's no reason to, to bring you into the episodes and stuff. That's, that's how I look at it too. Um, but, yeah. any, but anyway, if you were the killer this week or the traitor, who would you take out and why? Who would you be your target and why? Let's start with Donna. Uh, I start with Dom. I gotta think about that one for a minute, seriously, because there's there's like they typically they'd be going for the ones that would keep people guessing, right? The ones that haven't maybe been seen a lot. Like Mike has an, unfortunately has an easy target on his back. Um, uh, uh, names. I'm forgetting names, and I apologize to the cast, the crew for that space. But like there's there's plenty of moving targets. I think they're gonna go for someone silent again that's gonna make me go, what the hell just happened here? And so like like I said, I'm worried about Lori going home. I am worried about Lori that's going a teacher, home. Correct? That's, that's the, the teacher. Yeah. yeah. And then um, you know, we haven't seen a lot of the other cast really. Like we've seen our our crime, our paranormal, our 
brother sister a bit, but we haven't seen some of the cast a lot. But I'm I'm desperately concerned for Laurie in this next round. Got a lot I of confirmation think, bias going on. <laughs> I think, and I don't know, but I feel like Netta kind of likes her a little bit. Uh, I'm not 100. percent I think she does. Yeah. Is that the is that the yeah. lady that when she walked in, Netta was like, yes, you know, and at the at the breakfast. Yeah. So I feel yes. like if if and again, I don't know. Yes. I feel like Netta would probably try to protect her. Obviously, Kira is going to protect yeah. her brother. And and I don't know how yeah. it works in there, but I don't know if all of them are like, again, I, I look at things like, okay, you have your person, you have your person, I have my person. Uh, you know, Netta might be like, I want to protect the, the teacher. And Kira is obviously gonna be like, I'll protect my brother or whatever. And then whatever Michael wants to protect kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like for me, I, I would say Pac-Man. I think Pac-Man's a really, really, really good. Uh. The teacher's a great choice too. But I think Pac-Man's a really, really good choice. He's kind of like, you know, I don't think he's in anybody's business. I think he's doing a really good job. Uh, Dom, what do you think? I just, just, just from analyzing the way the traders are playing the game at this point, they're going to continue going down that same road where it's like, that person, why? Like, they, you haven't even heard from them. So, like, why them? That's what I think they're going to do. I think eventually they need to switch it up and do, like, maybe they go with somebody, like, for instance, this week where it was like, oh, if I get murdered, it was Kirkland. Like, eventually they're going to have yeah. to use that play at some point in time, but I think they're going to continue with their narrative at this point because they want to play it safe and get closer to the end and not have any heat at all. So I think that they're just going to keep going that, down that road. And I do think, once again, I'm with Don on this one. I don't know all the names clearly, but I, I agree with Pac-Man. I agree with Laura or Lori, whatever, whatever her name is there. Lori, yeah. And anybody else who isn't really making too many justice on the TV right now, no airtime is going to be someone who's going to be gone. I don't think like our last episode where it was like, oh, is it going to be this person or that person? Because it was like they were fighting amongst each other. I think this this time around, they got through that little hurdle and now they're all in, in combination with who they're getting out. So I think yeah. whoever they talked about is going to be gone. If I'm a traitor, Henoch is safe. Cedric's safe. The ones that were very vocal and kind of, you know, safe. Yeah. To save. There's a lot of people that are safe. Like people that are... People that are making the noise, people that are pointing the fingers, stick yeah. around, you know, stay around. So that's that's another argument. And we've yeah. talked about this one before. Donna, like, to me, sometimes I feel like the better players, they're going to try to cut out because they're the ones that are observing and piecing it together. The ones that are blowing things up, they're going to keep them to the end because it's like, hey, listen, they're doing the work for me. I don't have to speak. He knocks here, like, hard pointing. Trana is hard pointing. Cedric's yep. hard pointing. So yep. like I don't have yep. to do that. They're doing it to themselves. I, I I think that's the way to play. You just keep those ones safe. Let them point at each other. They're they don't trust each other already. And it's hard yeah. once you already yeah. don't trust each other, it's hard to build that trust. Once you yeah. once you don't trust each other, you're kind of and it's easy to kind of keep that wedge between them. Um yeah. to keep them apart. Yeah. So uh, that's what are your thoughts on that? The mentality. That's where I'm seeing the mentality different. Like they, they utilize situational things, occurrences to make murders, to point the blame on somebody else, as opposed to these traders here are being a little bit more subtle and not using confrontational issues. Mm. They're more or less saying, yeah, okay, they're, they're not really doing much. Let's get rid of them. No one's going to have a clue. Let's move on to the next person. That's good. So yeah, they're playing yeah. really smart in my eyes. Yeah. I actually got a question from Ori here. Ori's a good buddy of mine. Uh, and he says in the chat here, uh, I wonder if sometimes there's a real game talk or if it matters. The votes seem way less fleshed out than you would think and usually end up with the big splits. Do they even really have a good idea who is going at the vote from these talks or does the edit give us the same chaotic sense that the vote really has? No, I think you uh, know. I like the, the group. The, the, there's, there's, I think we can find some general consensus going on through chat or through groups throughout the day. But but regardless of what you see or don't see, those tables are chaotic 24-7. It is never not chaos, whether it's edited or not. There's never not chaos at the table. And um, it really can come down to, like, some of us made silent vote packs that we weren't going to wait to the table for and then take out some people that needed to go on the show. Like, there's you never know how those tables are going to go down. And they're always spicy. They're never not spicy. And and it's 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 traders like when I saw trying to end a uh, talk at the end, I'm like there and there it is. They've they've done their job. The traders can just walk, continue on, just grab your popcorn, sit back and watch the show because they they, they, they the faithfuls are just gonna keep blowing themselves up. The it's only just, thing I'm like, seeing the only thing I'm seeing from it is 
just being there and of experiencing it, the people who you've built relationships with, you tend to follow their vote. Even though you don't talk about it at the table, you follow. So, for instance, in this case, there's Mary Jo and there's Kirkland. Whoever voted for Mary Jo was closer with Kirkland, and whoever voted for Kirkland was closer with Mary Jo. Mary Jo. So, at one point or another, there was relationships formed where they're like, well, I don't care what was said at the table, even though it was said. I'm on this side more than I am on this side. And that's why the vote goes the way it is. And then essentially the traders kind of like, well, it doesn't matter to me. So as long as Kira goes one route, I go one route and that person goes one route, it doesn't make it seem like the triangle and pretty obvious. So those yeah. votes that split like that are pretty much the people had connections with the people that didn't vote with them. That's my opinion on that take. Yeah. So you're, so yeah. if I'm understanding this correctly, you guys already, the votes are basically already locked in before you go to the round table. The round tables, for, for the most, not maybe locked in, but you have a very, very good idea where you're going. Is that what, what you're getting at? <laughs> it doesn't matter what yeah. said. It doesn't matter what's said at the round table. Like, for instance, if Donna was in my group and Melee or whatever, and we're like, okay, listen, like, this is what we're going with tonight, I don't think there's much that really alters what's going to happen at the round table. Right. The vote's still going that way. Now, we might have made the decision based on who we didn't think was good to stick around for us, right? Or yep. that's where the narrative was going, and it was protecting us, so we just followed the lead. So. Oh, 100%. Like, and, yeah. And, and, and I yeah. can bring it back. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yep. No, I just can say, like, I don't know. I, I think we had one table where vote was going to go a certain way, and I can't even remember what table it was, but I know that at one point in time, just because of the roundtable conversation, votes got flipped in those conversations. So it does happen. It's a rare occurrence. I know, I can't remember who, the context of it all, but I can remember one sitting us all around, and some people were going to adamantly vote this way, and by the time we were done, the vote went that way. And so it's like it's tables can make a difference, and but it's no, it's not very. I'd um, say about 70, 75% percent of the the top, by the time we've gotten to the table, there's a pretty good. We're gonna have one or right. two or three names come out that are gonna be. And well, the the vote. Go ahead. Go the ahead. votes less obvious. The the votes less obvious than the killing. To be honest, like you yeah. go in there already kind of knowing what the game plan is, and you stick together yeah. with what you you and the people that you get along with discuss. Because you want to protect your team to help you get closer to the end, right? I know Bruno hates the whole yeah. team thing, but sometimes you got to yeah, utilize that team. Like I, uh, I understand. Three. Like I understand the team. I, I I understand. Like you need the numbers to get ahead. I understand that. But at the end of the day, it's an anybody but me mentality. And eventually, your group has to cannibalize itself. It that's the way the game we works. Did. Eventually. It's, we did. We did. One hundred percent. That's how the game's designed. So yes, it does you, get to... you gotta know when to. Yes, you need the numbers, but you're also working against them. That's your team, but it, you're a solo player in that team. It's a bunch of solo players working together to get ahead. Eventually, these 100%. solo players gotta cannibalize. That's where I. Yeah. Th I don't think Dom understands it. He thinks it's we're a team to the end. We're locked in, and we're gonna all win. It doesn't work that way. And that's what I try to explain. So um, no, but, come but here's on the thing. Now. Like with no, Big Brother, just, with no. Big Brother, okay, it's the same way. It's it's the 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 speeches don't matter. The votes once the noms are up, the votes are locked in. People think, oh, the final speeches make a difference. Nothing matters. That doesn't matter. It's all yeah. for show. You know who you're voting for. You know what's happening. And I completely get yeah. it. You're gonna stick with your people, and you're gonna be like, hey, it's not us. Let's get out this person. They're not working with us, or we don't trust them, or whatever it is. You know, let's get them out. Who cares? You don't how you. you you're going to flip a coin to find out if they're a traitor or not. I mean, it's you can think all you want, but you don't really know. And most of the time, you're going to get it wrong. Uh, Donna, what's going on? Yeah, no, I mean, it's a very, very valid point. It's just really hard for, like, when you watch the UK version where the three faithfuls won, there was a very approach to, uh, you know, like, there's a very calculated approach to all of that and how they did it and that's what we were trying to work on and this is the only way that the fake like you really because you listen i'm sitting there with my dear mickey in the car and like but the season it's, it's a hard game it's called traders for a reason mm -hmm. to the chances of winning as a faithful are very 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 rare in the entire franchise so so traders be traitor and and that's the fun of the game is like it's a madhouse and it's the best madhouse you could ever participate in but it's called the traders canada for a reason now i'm not familiar with the uk versions so you're saying there was three people that just locked in together and they went to the end 
they, they, yeah, they did this dance together that they were very committed. And as far as I was concerned, I felt it was going to be, and like I could have been taken out, but it was me, Mal A, Trevon, and Dom. And if we had had not our numbers taken out with the Dom thing, there was a chance because we were eventually, can't, you have to cannibalize the faithfuls. If you want to take it to the Absolutely. end and try and get any chance to table, there's a very clever game you have to play. We were going to, we, that, that was us. We were trying to do with the, the, the three UK team, and it just, the numbers got flipped and it was it because it literally yeah. was, you know, and this is the thing. There are faithfuls there and it's really hard because the game part of it is where we start to bond and get to have some maybe faith built and some faithfuls. Dom was the first one that said to me, just trust me, Don, or just lean in on a faithful. And we started out just like, and he started gathering. And so like, we don't see this in this season, not yet. And there's an editing going on. We have no idea. You're right. Like we could use another half hour of the show. Now, can just I to add a few more. I'm going to push back on that a little bit. So let's say we're on the season together. It's us three. And, and you said Trevon was another one and we all lock yeah. in and we trust each other. I'm a trader. You don't know that, but I'm a really good trader. I'm good socially. I said, Hey, Donna, trust me. I'm a faithful. And you're like, all right, I trust you. The four of us lock in, but little do you know, there's a trader in the mix. You know, you don't know that. Oh, I get that. Oh, I totally, totally get that. And the three UKers didn't either. They went on a leap of faith and they found the traitor in the end. So th this is the thing. You really, it's called traitors for a reason. Yeah. We know that the odds are winning. That's all, that's all no different than you want to be buddies with a traitor to get to the end anyway, to get a shot at them anyway. No, so, but the difference is get, if you listen. know they're a traitor and you buddy up, you know they're a traitor. If you if you hard clear me and we're in this trio and we're like, yo, we're the tightest, we're, the, we're going right to the end, we're winning this together, we're winning. And then we get there, and I'm like, sorry, guys, I'm the trader, and I just take all the money. Bye, have a good life. Then what? Because you trusted me on yeah. blind faith. That's the game, and that's what I mean. Like, I just, for me, this, I, I get oh, yeah. the numbers. I get it. I get it. I get it. But yeah. to me, it's like, if I'm a good trader and I'm in this cleared circle that we all vote together, of course I'm going to vote with you guys because you're doing my work. You think you're doing your work, but you're really doing my work as a trader. Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah. and, and that's, it's, it's a risk. Even. Even on our season, even though I got, you know, canned or whatever, I thought you guys still had a great shot with the numbers at the end. So yes. this is where this is where kind of more or less where Bruno doesn't know the ins and outs is how you said there was a divide is as much as you want to work with everybody together. Sometimes the personalities clash. They don't align. Yeah. But you can't form that connection I get that. to be I'm able gonna... to stick together. And yeah. that's what happened to you guys. That's why you guys got screwed at the end. See, I, this like, is the I, thing. I completely understand yeah. the like. Dude, I, I, the game I played was seventy days. You, well, how long is the traders? Twenty yeah. weeks. <laughs> I understand big personalities. I understand personalities clashing. I trust me, man. I get it. I one hundred percent yeah. understand it. Like, you're, like, you're not gonna. I'm sitting here fully yeah. understanding, and and I did it for seventy days. In two weeks, people can fake it for two weeks. In seventy days, you're getting the personalities coming out, and they're coming out hard. You're hungry. You're you know, it's it's the trust. Okay, <laughs> I get the personality. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, I understand it. You got to bond. Some people just can't get along. There's that's real life. That's in the workplace. That's at home. That's at school. That's wherever you go. And it's no different on a TV show. You're going to have personalities that clash. Uh, you're going to have people that you connect with. It's that's the reality of it. That's the way it goes. I get it. Um, it right. will forever be red team, blue team. <laughs> so Donna, I got a question so, for you. Yeah. Um, who's yeah. winning the season? I want to hear it. Who's winning? Yeah. I, honestly, the minute I saw Kira, I lit right up. If she played the really smart game, I saw her taking the game. Kira's taking it. I saw her. Yeah, Kira's great. I think I, she's great. I, I think she has Kira. a huge advantage. I, I I think she's doing great. Yeah. It depends how the brother thing yeah. plays out. I talked about this a little bit last uh, last podcast. Yeah. Me, where it, yeah. she has so much power and control. If she wants to turn on one of the traders, she can try to pull her brother in. Then it can, you know that that's a play. I don't know if it happens, but then it's her and her brother that have the numbers as traders, and they can just run the game. And that's what if I was Kira, I'd aim for that. If she was clever, what she'd be doing is because she's already hearing Michael complaining about the girl bond. If she needs to, what well, we may see this, if she offers a olive branch to Michael, those two take Netta out, then she really stands. If they can't get Netta out, Netta stands a chance of taking this game. Like if they can't get Netta out, it's between Kira and Netta, as far as I'm concerned. But I have my high, my hopes on Kira. I have my yeah. my feels on Kira. Netta Netta is great. I think Netta is such a good big brother player. Again, I've never played Traders. You guys have that experience. I mean, I don't have it, but it's a very different game from what I'm seeing. Um, and Netta has the right personality for it, the right like uh, strengths for it. 
Uh, she's really, really good. She has good mannerisms, the way she talks to people. She's just really good at it. Um, but again, she has the name. Some people already know who she is, and I think that's what's going to work against. It could work for her, and I think it could work against her. I think after a while, people are going to be like, hey, Netta's too quiet. I think she's just too quiet. Mm -hmm. And people are going to be like, what about Netta? Like, what does mm -hmm. she think? What do you think, Netta? Give us a name. or You, you got to give us something because you can't yeah. just not that's, give anything. Yeah. Uh, Dom, what do you think? That's what that's what's going to happen if they continue to follow. That's what I was talking about. If they continue to follow the same form that they're doing where they keep getting the quiet people out, eventually who's going to be the quiet ones left. So then all those people that they, they keep around that are the ones that are the talkers and cause the drama that they need to protect themselves. That's where they're going to get caught. For me, I'm going on a limb. Whoever eventually gets uh, flipped at the end of the season is going to take it. They're going to get it by oh, the, like of the strings. Only because everything's happening way too easy for them right now. Eventually, there's going to be controversy there. And I feel like someone's going to get brought in and just outsmart them at the end. I have a weird feeling. Uh, Dom, oh, I like that. Win? It depends on who they flip. I don't know. We'll have to see. Well, I'm going to say right Nick now. at this like, point. I'm, I'm right going to say it's going to work out in the favor where one of the traders goes gone. It's not going to get picked up that Nick's the brother. He's going to get flipped. And then eventually he's going to win at the end with his sister or with by himself if Netta gets the sister out. Yeah, to me, Kira and, and Nick have just a massive advantage right now. It's their game to lose, in my opinion. They mm -hmm. have the upper hand everywhere. Like, just, just they're two brother and sister. They can make friends with two different groups, share the information privately, like openly, 100% trustworthy. There's no 99% trust there. It's 100%. It's a brother and a sister. Come on. So they're going to have, like, you know – I'd be like, listen, you go make friends over there. I'm going to make friends over there. We get together. We share the information. So I know what they're saying. You know what they're saying. We work together. It's two heads working as one. One's a traitor and one's a faithful. And it's just there's just too many uh, advantages just everywhere, everywhere. And, and, and I think it's just too much, too much of an advantage. But that's what we get. That's the way it goes. Um, he, I just, yeah, it's too if much. He can, if he can get his brother flipped, if he gets her brother flipped, they got the win. If she doesn't get her brother flipped, Nat is going to get the win. We'll have to see. Uh, I want to say, guys, that was awesome. I, I really enjoyed talking to you guys. Is there anything you want to add? Uh, I do want to hear your handles. Uh, uh, Donna, where can we follow you? Twitter, Instagram. What do you have? Tell us. Tell us uh, Yeah, so I'm at Heart and Souls, H-A-R-T-T and S-O-U-L-S on Instagram. I'm Donna is a heart. Donna is a H-A-R-T-T -T on TikTok. And I'm Heart and Souls on Facebook. Right. A -T -R -T -T I, will, and souls. I will definitely Thanks. put those links in the comment below if you're watching this on youtube after i know some of us are here watching it live if you're watching on youtube after make sure you like the video and check out the links guys uh we're gonna put them there and dom where's your links i know we do it all the time but we're gonna do it again dom where's your links come on baby let's hear. Uh, i only got i only got one link that's instagram it's dom renovations as you could tell i'm more in the renovation field and not so much a treacherous person but i do like the vote of confidence from you donna at least you see where i was going with this Listen, I will always have your back. You, you, th this thing will never end between us because he, he was the one that said, Donna, just lean in, just trust me. And we started to do some things together that were absolute magic that were just like so close yet so far. It was the best. We had a really great cast. Like the cast was an absolute, like my, my piece of advice is to folks when you enter into this, it's a game. Don't let it play you. Stand back and take a breath. Be an observer. Work really hard at the competition. And see, I learn and grow so much about myself that that, for me, that no amount of money can, can give what I took away from being on the show. Like, it was, it, it changed my life in, a, in the best possible way. My hardest moments became my greatest teachers. That's and awesome. so... It, it's it's to get a seat at the table run don't walk if you get a, if you get a seat at the table run <laughs> hey donna dom told me he wanted to vote you out but anyway we'll talk about that later uh just, I, did not, just, I did not say that i'm just joking i know you didn't i'm just busting uh but no, i'm just joking but anyway uh that was i i, I want to say you guys were awesome i really enjoyed talking with you both donna you were amazing dom you're always Thank amazing you. uh and actually uh, you. all the way also guys uh dom just had his stag and doe on saturday uh, big congrats to that, Dom, and uh, that's Thank awesome. you to Donna. She donated uh, a free uh, session. A woman won it. She's probably going to reach out to you. Nice. Yeah, I love that. Do that's you do tarot great, reading Dom. and stuff, Donna? 
Pardon? Do you do uh, what kind of readings? Do you, tell us about your readings. So, so, so I've been seeing since I was three years old. I actually had someone walk into my door and I screamed because then I was told it was a nightmare. I had a knowing at grade and when I was five years old. So I see uh, our our loved ones on the other side, and I can read people's energy here in the physical world. So I help people clear up blockages and I move forward. And then my uh, bringing forward loved ones for humans is my favorite. Um, thing I could ever do in life it's, it's just I have been seeing since I was three and I can be sent to a, a grocery store because I'm supposed to stand in line next to someone who just lost someone and I'm bringing them through for them it's the wildest journey I live but yeah I've been doing it since I was three and so people didn't get a chance to see there's lots of footage CTV has all the footage of some of the predictions I made and some of the things I did you know we get invited for one reason on the show it's to be the wee woos and I'm okay with being a wee woo and I gave you a one wee woo show and I'm I look I really really appreciate on this season We've got some really cool, kooky, fun, quirky characters, and it's been a real delight to watch the, the new traders found. They're an absolute delight to watch. They're I gotta so say, good. I love Donna. I love you. I think you're you're so positive and so amazing. <laughs> I absolutely love you. I'm so thankful you came on here and and uh, <laughs> get to know you a little me. bit because we never met before. We never talked before, and I want to say yeah. uh, you just you're so positive. I, I love that. I really Thanks. do. So. Uh, you're you. amazing, Thank and you have you. good information. You got to teach Dom a few things here, because your information. I'm just, I'm busting his. I bust his balls <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah. I love Dom. I love him. I love him with all my heart. Can, I do. I bust his balls all I, the time. Can I? Can I tell you a really funny story yes. about the show? So, like, what people didn't know about me that I kept to myself was I was on a show called uh, Canada's Smartest Person on CBC. No way. And so people right, want, us, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I placed ninth overall out of 30 care. So, like, I have a higher, a little bit higher IQ. I process things at a different rate. But but people are asking me, how did you get on the show? How did you get on, the, like, the castmates were like, how did you get on? Like, I said, oh, man, they got so sick and tired of seeing me audition. They had no idea. Like, they just were like, oh, there's her name again. Let's get her on the show and get her to shut up that was my story to tell the castmates i'm like Amazing. Oh, I haven't been on that's pretty cool i gotta i gotta watch it you have to send me the link of the episodes i, I want to watch that. that's pretty cool <laughs> That's I'm awesome. Sure. Donna, you're, you're, you're amazing. I was really, you know, you have a really good Thank uh, you. attitude. You have a lot of great Thank personality. You. I love the cloak, the spider ring. You did awesome. Freddy Krueger for the win. Nice. Uh, nice. I was season. Freddy Krueger for Halloween one year. I loved it. Dom, where's your cloak? I love it. My cloak was gone. I told you I was going to simmer down a little bit this week. Why did you see simmer down? He's like, listen, I'm just, you know. Yeah. Funny. I had to simmer it down. But say hi to your husband over there, Donna. Yeah, I mean, and you, Dorita, I know. We're going to get out there and golf one day. We're just going to do the thing. Golf and well, what ended up what, hap what ended up happening with the Amazing Race? You were supposed to go up against Gerline and Kevin. Hey, listen. No, they got their own run to do. I didn't want to show them up. So we just let them have this season, and we'll get on the next one. Get show on the next really one, Donna. Done. Me and you. Hey. Me and you, Donna, will race against. <laughs> yeah. We'll race against against it was supposed to be me and rita Dom, so. me on. yeah <laughs> all right guys thank you so much i appreciate it uh, and uh, again you. everybody make sure we check out their links uh dom great job donna great job i really appreciate this thank you you guys are awesome great great thank job thank you all right guys say, i'll chat with you you'll later. have to make a se separate podcast with the uh, questions on the youtube there you go. Yeah. So and, and again, guys, yeah. Make sure if you have any questions that we didn't ask or answer, put it in the links below on the YouTube, and, and we'll get to it. Okay, guys. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm gonna hang up the call here, but we'll see you soon. Take care.